Okay, welcome to the R Boot Camp lecture for page 1.1. And this is on the subject of uh, syntax basics. So, what is syntax? Syntax is just the uh, rules of the language in, the, in a programming language, in this case R. Um, the boot camp link is right here in the beginning. My name is Ed Harris. I'm a, a senior lecturer in statistics at Harper Adams University. And this is the very first um, uh, main page where we start learning about, about R in the whole boot camp. So um, let's get started. Now, I like to use a couple of metaphors, and I'll introduce several metaphors to you about um, the process of learning R, and, I, and I'll refer back to them um, in the course of the boot camp. And one of them is the notion that the R system is a passive-aggressive butler. What do I mean by that? Well, we, um, if we want to get technical, and I don't want to get too technical uh, here in this boot camp, but R um, as a programming language and the R system as a, an interpreter of the R programming language uh, is a uh, is an interpreted programming language. <laughs> so what that means is that you can just type the code, submit it to the system, and behind the scenes the code translates your um, your R code, which is kind of easy for humans to read, or at least it's meant to be easy for humans to read, and and many people would say it is very easy to read relative to other computing computer programming languages. Um, and the computer um, does things for you behind the scenes and then spits out an answer based on your commands. Well, sometimes, especially when we're learning, we can submit syntax that uh, maybe, maybe is a little incorrect as, according to the rules of the, the R syntax. And uh, in that case, the butler behind the scenes might might uh, say, hey, you've made an error, um, now fix it. And maybe they'll give a little bit of a hint as to what the error is. So part of learning to um, program in R is uh, learning to figure out those little hints, figure out what they mean. Sometimes you make an error and the butler doesn't give you any feedback. Uh, it's a little passive aggressive, so we also have to be careful of that. The worst case scenario, though, is when you submit a, um, a command intending one thing, but the command you submit actually gives the command for something slightly different, and the butler goes ahead and does it, does it anyway. It gives you an answer for a question you didn't ask. So in that case, um, the, the situation I want to suggest to you is that the butler can be very, very helpful for us at times, but we shouldn't trust him not completely. We should always be a little careful in the way that we ask and receive and interpret answers to our questions. So when you go through this page, um, the things that you're going to learn are how to set up a script. What's the best practice? Now, of course, you, I can't make you set up a script in a particular way, and, and maybe I shouldn't even suggest for you to set up a script in the way that I like to set up a script. What I can do is suggest some elements of best practice and I can show you a cookbook recipe, a template for the way that I like to practice the best practice. So we'll look at that. Um, <clears throat> because we're talking about our syntax, we need to learn some of the basic operators for doing maths. Uh, these are you know, like multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, and, and some other ones that are useful. We will look at um, so-called logical operators. A technical way to call these is Booleans. So these are um, values that, uh, that uh, take on a yes or no, zero or one, true or false, but can be used in expressions that also evaluate to true or false. So we'll learn a little bit about logic and how to express it. Um, we'll say a note about the particular flavor of um, the R programming language that we're going to practice in the boot camp that 
everyone learns with. And that's, that's these days it's called base R. It's just plain R, no fancy stuff. Um, and there is another version of R that if you Google around on the web, you'll quite quickly find something called the tidyverse. Now the tidyverse is, a lot of people really like it. I like it, I think it's really cool. But it's my opinion that it's uh, it's harder to start if you don't have existing experience in R or other programming languages. So we're gonna stick with base R. So we'll make a little bit of a distinction about that. And then, like with every page, there are some practice exercises. Now, to get the most out of this boot camp, um, the intention is to read along with the web page, and when code examples arise, you will get most out of it if you type the examples yourself rather than copying and pasting them. Uh, you will make some syntax mistakes, especially at the beginning, but uh, you will learn and benefit from the process of making the mistakes um, and run the code yourself. Run it as you go along while you're reading the page, and that will give you the practice and the muscle memory and the, um, the begin uh, the process of learning uh, to parse your own script, your own code. Uh, for for errors and you will make errors everybody makes errors um, all the time when they're typing so picking up on these little typos takes practice and that's what we're doing uh, you can copy and paste of course I can't stop you it's just that you'll get more out of this and you'll learn faster if you type everything um, the other thing that I want to say about this is that <clears throat> Um, there will be a script accompanying uh, every bootcamp page that already has the uh, syntax typed. And so if you do run into an error and you get frustrated, don't spend too much time on it. Don't allow yourself to get frustrated. Go ahead and, and look at the script that I've already typed for you that works perfectly and, and just have a look at what it looks like. And then, you know, by all means, you can, uh, you can use the the uh, solution for running code. Now your first script might look something like this. This is um, has got a header section. It identifies um, who has done this. You would replace your name with your real name. Just go ahead and get in the cop in the habit of um, actually putting this in there. Um, you may have a little extra information like the name of the data file if you're analyzing data in this case a link to the bootcamp materials what is the the purpose of the script <clears throat> in this case it's you know the uh, first bootcamp page you can put it description more more descriptive description there if you wish and the date um, I like to put the date because uh, then the next time I look at it, I know the last time that I looked at it, and it just gives you full information, and it's so easy to do. I prescribe using the date format um, in this international ISO standard of the year, dash, the month, dash, the days. Um, this is a nice format on, in anything with computers because it sorts perfectly by time <laughs> because of the name. All right, um, and for the contents, I've set up the contents page here. I'm setting up a section for every single section of code matching the uh, sections in the uh, bootcamp page, and they're listed right at the top of each page. So maybe that will be the same way that you set your, your scripts up. Now, I have already mentioned this, and I will mention it again in the future, but it's so important that I thought I'd mention it again. I want you to type this code yourself. And um, the reason for that is that it's, it is so common these days to, and, and in fact, it's one of the great things about using R and um, learning, learning online, is that out there on the internet, you can, any problem you're ever likely to encounter, and this definitely goes for R, data science, statistical analysis, things like that somebody else has already encountered this problem <clears throat> they've already coded a solution for your problem most likely and 
it's just out there. They've posted the solution. It's out there for you to find and use. All you have to do is find it. Well, a couple of things. One thing is that um, when we're learning, especially, sometimes it's very hard to find the solution that uh, matches our situation exactly, and to and to um, to um, map on an existing solution to our problem. And when you're beginning, this is very very hard to do. It gets easier as you go along. So that would suggest in that situation that uh, you know let's type the code now and hold off on googling until you gain a little experience so that you can make a strong judgment and do do that efficiently. Second, if you have a problem that is uh, very common like how do I do a t-test in R? You'll Google and you'll get you know thousands and thousands and thousands of hits. So which one do you use? It's confusing. It, have you found base R or have you found tidyverse? Have you found some complicated solution when yours is simple? Have you found a simple solution when yours is complicated? That's also most difficult when you're first starting out. So you get this situation where you find some code, you copy and paste it in, and the code doesn't work. Super frustrating, plus you wasted all your time. So what I suggest for this boot camp, because the, uh, it's like a sandbox for problems, I have, um, I have contained all of the information within the boot camp pages uh, and within the help system, which we'll get into in R itself, so that you don't have to do any Googling, and I recommend you don't until you um, until you get through the boot camp. So if you find yourself having to Google, it may be that that you could pay more attention to um, to typing the code yourself and and using the example scripts that are available there for you. And then last is the exercises. Um, so every boot camp page has exercises, at least a handful of questions. Some of them are harder than others. Now, um, one of the questions is always, given what you've just learned, and given the questions you've just um, answered, why don't you write a question now? So uh, you can share the questions you've written. You can do that on the um, Slack channel if you've joined that. This is um, a community of learners just like yourself. And the way that I think about these questions uh, when I'm teaching or uh, when I was making the boot camp, indeed, is some questions are very easy. Some might be minimum, medium in difficulty. The easy ones might just be a, a simple case of doing one, one task. But a medium one might require putting together two tasks to solve a solution. A hard one might be a more complex task or something that requires some more thought or something that um, puts together concepts between different boot camp pages. So uh, that's the way I categorize them. Um, we don't want them to be too long. We don't want them to be too hard to be frustrating. So uh, I strongly recommend you attempt these exercises and uh, in including writing your own exercises. And if you write them, it's like uh, the philosophical question, if you cut a tree down in the forest and no one uh, is around to see it, did you really cut a tree down? It's the same with these questions. Why don't you release them into the wild, into Slack? Let us see what you're writing. Get some feedback, free feedback on your own word. Get some, get some praise. Hey, thanks for sharing. All right, that's it. I'll see you next time.